Welcome everybody to this uh, brand new tutorial series uh, where we will be talking about uh, Houdini as you might have guessed uh, this will all all be about Houdini um, Houdini has been the future in the past and is still the future for a lot of studios um, Houdini is really really a big package it comes with a lot of stuff with a lot of really nice stuff you can do almost everything that you can imagine inside of Houdini, no matter if you want to program your own stuff, if you want to build your own shaders, if you want to do hair, if you want to do muscles, if you want to do pyro simulations, or if you want to do water simulations, or just simply rendering, modeling, or what do I know. Um, Houdini is like really the complete package and it's really, really, really good. And a lot of studio, uh, studios working with it on a daily to daily basis. And this is of course for a reason because Houdini is really good. And so yeah, I just thought um, it's time that we get a little bit our asses into Houdini, a little bit away from Cinema 4D. This doesn't mean that we need to drop Cinema 4D, but I think it's definitely good for the future that you also know some basics inside of Houdini or maybe a little bit more than just the basics. So. What I did for this uh, complete series, I did install Linux, as you can see. Um, this is actually CentOS. CentOS is a Red Hat based uh, Linux system. And you need a Red Hat based Linux system if you want to have Autodesk Maya or if you want to have uh, Houdini working on your Linux distribution. I think Ubuntu or something like that is not working. And so the good thing is about CentOS, it comes for free. And if you want to install it like me, you can just simply search on YouTube, install CentOS next to Windows, and then just simply follow those tutorials uh, step by step how you can install this, uh, which is kind of easy. And you may ask yourself, Dominic, why should I use uh, Linux if I can install Houdini on my Windows system as well? Well, the thing is, what I read like maybe four years ago, I saw this water simulation on BMO. And the guy wrote some, I mean, this was, bear in mind, this was like four years ago. I'm not sure how it is today, how uh, Windows manages it today and how Houdini does manage it today. Uh, but the guy said back then, I recommend to use Linux for heavy simulations because Linux has a better RAM usage than Windows. It makes me more than 64 gigabyte of RAM on Windows and it only took 34 gigabyte RAM on, on Linux, this simulation. So yeah, this is a really, really huge difference to be honest. So this is why I said to myself, okay, no matter what, um, I wanna try out Linux anyway. And if you ever wanna work in a big studio environment, you probably have to get used to Linux anyway a little bit. Um, this terminal box here will probably become your best friend uh, over the next months because we also will do some stuff in there. Um, you don't have to use Linux. You can also use Windows for this tutorial series. It will make no difference on Houdini whatsoever. Um, by the way, I'm also using the Houdini Apprentice version, which you can also use for free. So CentOS, the Linux version, comes for free. The Apprentice version of Houdini comes for free. The only thing is it's a non-commercial version, so we cannot do any commercial work with it. But basically everything is working inside of Houdini like it would in a full version. And so it's definitely more than enough um, to check it out because we can do everything basically. And uh, the only thing that I can do is probably to monetize this video on YouTube so that I get any money. But uh, to be honest, you're not earning with 3D tutorials any money anyway. Um, you don't get that many views normally. And if you really want to uh, help me out a little bit or wanna, if this video series helps you in any way, you can find my Patreon link under every video or just on the top of my YouTube channel and chip in something a little bit there every month if you want to or just for one month or whatsoever. And uh, so, yeah, as you can see, I have all my favorite programs here installed as well. So I have my faulty media player, I have Spotify for my daily music, I have Google Chrome installed, my brand new simple screen recorder that just simply comes for free where I don't have to pay for Camtasia or something else. I have Skype installed and a lot of other stuff as well. Um, we will also be using, the only thing that we can't use is really like Photoshop because for Photoshop you need a virtual box or something like uh, that emulates kind of windows in the background for Photoshop. You can set this, uh, this up as well. I will try to avoid it. We will do all the post work for the work that we will be doing inside of the non-commercial working uh, version of Nuke, which is also note based. And you probably also are already crying a little bit if you never have touched before, like ah, not Nuke, please don't do it to me. Um, but we will also look into Nuke a little bit to do our post work there. 
Um, it's also a full functional version of Nuke. It's just a non-commercial version as well. So we'll install this later on when we need it and then just simply do our post work in Nuke, which will also help because in some bigger studios, they definitely use Nuke in post work and not something like After Effects or whatsoever um, because of some accessibility and what do I know. I will teach you this uh, a little bit later uh, when we jump more into this. So we will talk about um, modeling, we will talk about shading, we will talk about texturing um, and how you can make selection text like in Cinema 4D, in Houdini, um, how we can render this stuff out. We will first of all do this all this mantra, which is the built-in render engine of Houdini and also gets used a lot of pr uh, in production. And then we'll also have a look at Redshift, Arnold and RenderMan. So we'll check out all those three other render engines as well, which are probably uh, getting used in production a lot as well so that you know how you can shade in all those different engines, how you can light properly and how you can render stuff out and so on and so on. Then we will also dive into VDBs, how we can uh, make VDBs, how we can bring simulations from uh, Houdini to C Cinema 4D if you really want to render it out there. Um, I don't really think there will be much of a proposed. Maybe if you need it for a client, they need maybe a cloud simulation or what do I know. And then you just want to work with it in, in Cinema 4D, then I will show you how you can do that also with particles and what do I know. And then we will dive into grooming hair, we will dive into uh, water simulations, maybe some pyro simulations and what do I know. So we really get a, a really, really closer look into Houdini even thought, I mean, I probably could do a, a series now for years and we would not close the chapter Houdini at some point because there is just so much stuff that you can do, so much stuff that you can program on your own. Um, so yeah. This will be a really, really long chapter, but I will try to make this transition from Cinema 4D to Houdini as good as I can and explain it as easy as I can so that you can really transfer, transfer your daily Cinema 4D workflow to Houdini easily and get into it and that you are not scared of it anymore. Um, the only thing that I want to say, if you do install Linux and also want to use it like me uh, for this tutorial series, please do it. Make sure that you have an Ethernet adapter uh, that you have a physical cable uh, connected to your Ethernet adapter and that you get the Internet not from any VLAN source or Wi-Fi source that, that you really have it connected to your computer. Because when you install it for the first time, it might be that it needs some updates and um, that the NVIDIA drivers are not getting install installed correctly. And because the VLAN uh, Wi-Fi driver just gets installed a little bit later, um, then you don't have the possibility that um, the NVIDIA driver is getting installed right away. And the problem is that then CentOS maybe is installed, but it does not boot because the video driver is not uh, up to date and then you're just simply screwed. So please make sure that you have this a cable plugged in that is connected to the internet and while you're installing CentOS for the first time. And if it's then still not working, please make sure that you also have a cell phone next to you that is connected to the internet where you can search some stuff on YouTube, how to install NVIDIA drivers on CentOS if it's not booting and so on and so on. There are a lot of tutorials. I had to do this by myself. I probably spent like half a day to get this set up. And uh, this was like one year ago. I did use it barely in the meanwhile. Now I did come back for this tutorial series to it and also did make some adjustments here uh, to the desktop as you probably will see when you start up first uh, CentOS for the first time you will not see this uh, like this. And also the problem was with the last update that I did because basically the first thing that you do when you're starting up Linux is you just simply go yum install update. This basically updates Linux every single day. I need to be root for that. Okay, so I have to be a super user so you just type in su type in the password that you type in for the first time when you install CentOS and then you go uh, yum update, uh, yum install update and then we just simply search for new packages and will uh, update your system automatically which you should probably run every day when you start this up. And the problem is with the last update um, that my uh, Wi-Fi card uh, did not work anymore. So I had to search like kind of a while to find a solution for this, but now everything is working fine. Um, the problem is with Linux, it's not like Windows. Not everything comes out of the box. You can run from time to time into some problems, but you will 
get used to it and also all the bigger studios are running uh, their networks and their stations on a linux based system so if you ever want to work for a bigger studio you definitely have to know linux a little bit as well so this tutorial can only help you when you see how i'm working sometimes with the terminal here and so on and so on um, but you don't have to do that you can still stay on windows if you want to Okay, so this was just a, a quick introduction of what we will be doing and also what software I will be using in this tutorial series and that I'm working on Linux and what do I know for only RAM purposes, basically. Um, but yeah, and in the next lesson, we will start to dive right in into Houdini, look at some modeling, look at some shading, uh, look at lighting and all the other nice and really cool stuff. And I will see that I can make this as easy for you as possible so yeah I, I think i think that's it and um i catch you in the next lesson i guess all right thanks for listening